Let's talk about goodness of fit in the multiple regression context. So this is section 6.4 in Stock and Watson, and I encourage you to read it and not just go by these very brief notes and summary of the ideas. As before, we have two measures of goodness of fit. The first, the standard error of the regression, which is a measure of the standard deviation of the error term, of the residual. So it's a measure of the spread of the distribution of the outcome, the y variable, around the regression line. So that's very important that you remember that. It's a measure of the spread of the error in the regression, of the deviations of the actual y values, the outcome values, from the predicted values. So we calculate that as the uh, square root of the sum of squared residuals divided by n minus k minus 1. So the only difference here between the SER of the single variable regression uh, is this uh, n minus k minus 1. So instead of n minus 2, we have n minus k minus 1. If k were equal to 1, if we only had one regressor, so k is the number of regressors, not including the constant, if we only had one explanatory variable, then this would be n minus 2, which is what we had before. Um, but now we could have k being equal to 5, to 7, so we could have uh, uh, as, as many variables as we had in our regression. Uh, and so the sum of squared residuals divided by n minus k minus 1, we take the square root of that, uh, and that's what uh, the standard error of the regression is. And of course, the sum of squared residuals is the sum of each one of the residuals squared. So that's the standard error of regression, a measure of the dispersion of the error in our regression. So it's in units of the y variable, of the outcome variable. So we can compare that, say, to the mean of y um, or to the range of y, and uh, that thus have something to say about whether our error is sort of really big or really small. So that's one indicator of the goodness of fit of the regression. The other indicator is uh, the same analogous to our r square. So the r square from before is the explained sum of squares divided by the total sum of squares or 1 minus the sum of squared residuals divided by the total sum of squares. And as before, the explained sum of squares is the difference between the predicted value of y and the mean of y. So it's the part of the variation that's explained by the regression line, by our model. And the total sum of squares is all the, the variation in the y variable around its mean. So that's basically what needs to be explained, right? So our y variable, our outcome, has variation around its mean. That's what we want to explain with the explanatory variables. The explained sum of squares, ESS, is telling us how much of the variance is explained uh, by, by the regression model. And so the variance attributable to the regression model divided by the total variance in the y is our uh, r-square. Alternatively, uh, and we can use algebra to show that these are equivalent, uh, the r-square is equal to 1 minus the sum of squared residuals, right? So yi minus uh, yi hat is just the same thing as uh, ui hat, right? It's the residual, and we square that residual, add them all up, and we divide by the total sum of squares. So uh, those are our two alternative ways of calculating r-square. So we can do that with multiple regression. There's no reason why we can't, right? Uh, it's exactly the same formula as before. Now, notice that automatically, whenever we include, whenever we include another variable, r squared goes up. So that that has to be the case. 
as long as the estimated coefficient is not exactly equal to zero, if the estimated coefficient is exactly equal to zero, that means that new variable that we're adding is not explaining any of the variation in the outcome. But as long as the coefficient is not equal to zero, the new variable that we add to our regression explains some of the variation in y, and so the sum of squared residuals will then be smaller, and so our square will then be higher. So automatically, adding more variables will increase the r square. Now, in economics, we don't want to encourage people to add more var variables that uh, maybe aren't relevant to the model. So we have a better measure of goodness of fit, which we call the adjusted R-square. And this adjusted R-square, we introduce another term here. So the adjusted R-square, it's usually written as R-bar squared. Uh, is equal to 1 minus the sum of squared residuals divided by the total sum of squared, but we adjust it by this n minus 1 uh, divided by n minus k minus 1. And what this does is introduce the number of regressors into the adjusted r square, so that as we add more variables into our regression, the sum of squared residuals will go down, but this number, this k here, will go up, which will make the denominator here um, smaller, which will make this whole term larger, which then reduces uh, r squared. So the adding more variables has the effect of causing the sum of squared residuals to fall, but causing this number to rise. So the overall effect is uh, depends on the particular situation. So now as we add more variables, we in some sense get penalized. Our goodness of fit measure gets penalized by adding too many variables that don't actually contribute very much to explaining the uh, variance of the outcome. So that's our adjusted uh, R-square. It's uh, You'll see when you run regressions that uh, uh, adjusted R-square is uh, different from the R-square. Sometimes it can be substantially different. Often that's for most of our uh, examples, it will not be uh, very different because we're not doing models where we're including uh, 100 extraneous variables, in which case the adjusted R-square might be considerably lower than the R-square. Um, so these are the three measures of goodness of fit, and I encourage you to read the section 6.4 in Stock and Watson.